Hey, hey, Sammy Do coming to you live from Precious World Office Studios. Real estate mentor and coach and investor, founder of the Real Estate Wholesale Helpline. I want to talk to you today about prerequis prerequisites that are necessary uh, in order to be in the real estate investing business. If you uh, ever thought about getting into the real estate investing business or if you are in the business and still trying to get your first or second deal, uh, you definitely want to subscribe to this channel because we come to you from a grassroot standpoint, giving you the golden nuggets, the secret sauce that you're not getting anywhere else. And I want to talk to you about the two prerequisites uh, to be in this business. Sammy Stay Duke, tuned. live from Precious World Studios, doing it again, dropping another golden nugget. isn't for everybody not everybody's cut out for this business so without these two requisites if you can't acquire these prerequisites this could be a money pit for you so this is why I want to give you the raw grassroots truth about how uh, what you would need in order to be successful in this business okay so we're talking about the two prerequisites that are necessary in order to have a successful real estate investing business uh, if you're trying to get your first second deal we already talked about uh the first prerequisite of just needing a level of education about the business needing a level of education about the business and we also talked about in that video uh that you can get that so much quicker and cheaper by simply acquiring a mentor having someone that can take you up under their wing that is seasoned in doing deals uh and uh like i said it'd be so much less expensive and so much less uh time consuming uh, from your trial and error of trying to figure it out on your own because uh, you just don't know what you don't know now the second prerequisite uh, that uh, we talked about are a set of skills a set of skill sets a, a, a various a various amount of skill sets and in this video I want to talk about the skill set of having a strong mindset a strong mindset I want to talk about uh, the skill set of having a strong mindset I also want to give you seven or so pointers on how you can uh, improve having a strong mindset uh, because with skill sets sometimes you have them naturally sometimes you don't sometimes you have to learn them sometimes you have to acquire them uh, in, in the real estate investing business if you don't have them you're not going to have any success in the business so if you don't have certain skill sets uh, you want to be able to acquire them and develop them so with regards to a strong mindset I want to give you seven pointers but let me just tell you why First of all, when we talk about a strong mindset, there are a lot of negative uh, items that, that you encounter when you're trying to do this business, especially while you're new uh, and you're trying to get started. I mean, sometimes the negativity uh, is just simply within the family, the spouse, the wife, the husband, um, friends. Uh, that saying what are you doing and you are you going for that are you falling for that or why why you just uh, uh, don't work a real job or, or something of that nature there's just a lot of negative pushback because they're not entrepreneurs they're not trying to be entrepreneurs they don't understand the concept of entrepreneurship that's because it's for you uh, you know God uh, didn't call them he called you if you have the unction of needing and wanting to do the entrepreneurship and you're looking at the real estate space to do that in that's on you and you you want to own that and unfortunately a, a lot of negativity that is around you from folks that are not prepared uh, to make that move like you 
can have an impact on your mindset. When you're always pushing against the grain, when you seem like you're the only one uh, trying to do what you do. Now that's where a lot of the negativity begin. Now it'd be great if you had a great family support system that's trying to support you to do whatever. Then you don't have that particular one. That's awesome, but that's uh, that's not that's not everybody's experience. Uh, I can tell you, definitely not everybody's experience. Now some other no's come from uh, simply the business itself, the nature of the business. Uh, you get a lot of no's. When it comes to folks talking about wanting to sell and they're not wanting to take your price, you're getting those when you're trying to sell an item and they're not wanting to buy it at your price. You, you're getting those where uh, some of your power team are, is telling you some risks uh, that is associated with the deal that may not be recommended. Um, you get no's where um, people are letting you down, not coming through, where they promised to come through at. You get no's where folks have done ripped you off, where they've made a promise that they can get something done for you for a particular price, and they don't. That's a neg negative. Uh, you, 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 there, there are all kind of negative no's uh, that you can get that can really, really wear on you. And then uh, if you are having some, even some medical crisis like I had, I... Uh, some years ago had a very significant medical crisis where uh, as a result, I was placed on some prescriptions and those prescriptions induced um, my uh, some, some depression, uh, some mental depression, uh, mental illness that I had been uh, struggling with and it just made it much, 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 much worse and out of control and uh, kind of caused everything around me to just implode because of that illness. Um, and, and, and then when you get nose on top of that, that that's magnified 10 and 20 times. Just, one, you know, one no, one no would lock me up like this, you know, just like, oh man, I'm not doing nothing. I'm just going to sit here and die. <laughs> but uh, uh, you, you got to be able to recognize that uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, pushing against the grain and you have to have a strong mindset to overcome those items. Because at the end of the day, if other people can have success in it, why can't you, right? Uh, but maybe it's because they have a strong mindset and you have to develop one. And this is why I want to give you uh, some pointers on what you can do to help improve having a strong mindset. How do you know if you don't have a strong mindset? Well, if you're very emotional uh, and your mind can't keep you under control with your emotions, that that's that's not really having a strong mindset. You're you're kind of you're kind of going to and fro with the wave of the emotion, and that's very dangerous in this real estate investing business. You you definitely don't want to be emotional in this business. Um, emotions can cause you to lose uh, and take risks that you shouldn't and, and lose a lot. So I want to give you um, seven pointers on how to maintain a strong mindset when you're dealing with the negativity, the, the negative Nancy's, the antithesis of what you're trying to go for, the opposite of what you're trying to gain, some losses, some risks, of maybe even some decisions that you made that wasn't the best. Um, I want to give you seven pointers on how to deal with that where you can develop a stronger mindset. Point number one is when that negative situation gets into your sphere, uh, you know, a, a deal that didn't go through, uh, a promise that was not fulfilled, a, uh, a commitment that was not honored, uh, those types of negative items, uh, the paycheck that didn't uh, get, get uh, you, you know, the closing that didn't happen so you can get your paycheck, right? Those things, you, 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 let me give you one, the first thing that you want to do. First of all, don't react to it right away. Don't, don't react to it. That's a mind over matter type of situation where you don't react to it right away. Don't get emotionally attached. Don't uh, say something stupid. Don't 
do anything stupid just don't react to it right away take it in and remain calm about it and just process it just process it just understand okay this didn't close you know why, why doesn't it why didn't it close um what what maybe possibly could have been done differently to get this to close or they said yes yesterday and now they're saying no today why why did they say no today when i thought we were going to have a contract today after they told me yes yesterday what let me just think about that slow now where where what kind of gaps is it possibly that i could have filled or you know let me just don't react to that right away slow yourself down okay that's a mind over matter situation that you have to in fact speaking of the mind point number two i want to tell you is you got to be very conscious of what's in your mind you got to be very conscious of what's in your mind and let me give you something because um a lot of people don't understand that our creator god our creator has given us the power and the authority to control and deal with the thoughts that are in our mind we do not have to succumb to negative thoughts that are in our mind i i and i'll, and I'll just give you a, a scriptural reference in second corinthians chapter 10 uh, you go to verse 4, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought. I want to reemphasize that. Bringing every thought. Bringing every thought into the captivity and the obedience of Jesus Christ. Bringing every thought into captivity. Bringing every thought into captivity. This is where you are being conscious of what's in your mind. And all that stuff about, you know, the devil made me do it. And I have all these negative influence and all this kind of stuff. No. You still own it because nobody's picking up your arm and making you do that. No one's making you pull the trigger. No one's making you do anything except what you allow yourself to do. And you allow yourself to do it because of the way you think. And so in order to acquire a strong mindset, you have to first of all understand that you control the thoughts that are in your mind. According to scripture, it says, we're supposed to bring those thoughts into the captivity, into captivity, capture that thought and bring it into the obedience of Christ. Thus, if it, if it exalts itself against the situation that you're in, then that's a thought you want to cast out. That's a thought that says, no, that's not cool. I know that I know I'm, I'm above and not beneath. I know this is, this is my thoughts have to align with the authority of what I'm trying to do. We control those thoughts. So you want to be conscious of your thoughts and bring them into the captivity and make sure that they are in alignment with the purpose and the goals of what you're trying to achieve. Just because you got to know, because you're talking to someone uh, and they said no, okay, that might be no today, which really kind of means not now. So you can actually still put them on a particular reminder to follow up with them maybe in two weeks or in 30 days right versus just saying they said no now you're gone and you know ball game's over uh so that is a very 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 critical area to develop a strong mindset is practicing isolating those thoughts that are in your head no you're not crazy you control those thoughts you can identify those thoughts i know even when i was in depression and there were times I was feeling, I had those suicidal thoughts. The one thing I continued to tell myself before I even really knew what was going on, but I, I, I learned what was going on afterwards. But I told myself these thoughts of wanting to, you know, kill myself, these, uh, these, that's not my character. I kept telling myself that. I aligned it to who I knew that I was. These thoughts are not my character. And because of that, I later learned, you know, I've been dealing with depression. And, and then I've also found out 
that it was induced by some bad prescriptions that I had been on for almost two years that was really running me into the ground. But what really helped me to isolate that was isolating these thoughts that were exalting themselves against who I was and bringing them into captivity to say, hey, this is not who I am. I am not someone that feels like I'm weak, that I need to kill myself. Although I had the feelings and the emotions and even the thoughts came into my mind for it, I had to isolate those thoughts and said, something is wrong. Something is wrong and I need to find a remedy to deal with that. After that is when I learned that, hey, what I've been dealing with is depression. Go figure. I went to go and research it. I had some sane moments where I was really researching some things. Now, with that being said, this is probably the pivotal point, the pivotal point of, you know, turning the trend of maintaining a strong mindset. Point number three, and I've kind of talked about this already. You, you want to make sure you keep your emotions in check. And when you do have those emotions, you want to understand your why. Okay. You want to understand the why you're trying to do this business, the why you want to be in the real estate investing game. Uh, the why uh, is, is the general driver to keep you passionate for doing it. I have a number of students sometimes, uh, definitely in the past, that uh, wanted to do it and then they found out how hard it was and they weren't executing and now they done disappear, right? Why? Because their why wasn't strong enough. Their why wasn't strong enough. They only, when your why becomes greater than you, your want, when your why becomes greater than your want, then that's when you're going to be pushed to that extra strength in your mind to make you be able to persevere, per persevere over those negative Nancy's, over those negative and challenging obstacles. When your why becomes stronger than your want, you know, everybody wants stuff. Everybody wants stuff. But not everybody wants to do what's necessary to get what they want. Not everybody's wanting to do what's necessary to be able to achieve driving a Bentley or having a private jet or getting a bigger house. Nobody's wanting to do what's necessary to become a millionaire. They, they only want to become a millionaire. But when you say, well, you know, quit your job and try this, they look at you like you're crazy. Well, is your job going to make you a millionaire? Obviously not. But do you want to be a millionaire? Well, yeah, I want to be a millionaire. Well, what are you doing to propel yourself to, the, to being a millionaire? And I'm not advocating quitting your job. I'm just saying don't put all your hopes into the job. Do something on top of your job until whatever you're doing says you can't afford to go work that job anymore. <laughs> so... When your want, when your why becomes higher than you want, that's going to help align you with actions that's going to keep you going towards reaching your goals. This is part of having a strong mindset, reflecting on the why. Now, point number four, when negative things do happen to you, when you get that no, when you get the, the thing that falls through, Change the way you think about a situation versus saying that it was a failure. Say that it was a learning experience. This is what I need to do better next time. This is what I need to do different next time. Say, so, you know, change the way you think about a situation where you're just being defeated, that it's a, a negative impact. This is going to help you to get a better and stronger mindset. Why did that person change their mind the next day? Because you slept overnight. They told you yesterday, but now to, uh, they told you yes yesterday, but now today they're telling you no. Why? What's going on with that? Is there something you could have done better? Should maybe I got in the contract right away because uh, you didn't do it because it was one o'clock in the morning uh, when you were talking to them and you said, "Well, I'll just come back tomorrow uh, and do it." No, uh, you stay there and you get the contract drawn up. <laughs> no, but, you know, having those things of what, when you have those negative impacts, being able to look at them differently and, and think about it differently is going to help you acquire a stronger mindset. So you're not just sitting in defeat. 
Point number five, you can choose how you react to those negative situations. And I already kind of told you, don't react right away. Just because something bad has happened, something challenging has happened, just because you got some bad news, some bad information, something fell through, you don't want to react right away. On the same token, point number five, you can choose how you want to react to it. You can choose how you want to react to it. You can, you can, you know, vent for a minute and then, you know, look at what needs to be done. You can not vent for a minute. Just look at what needs to be done. Uh, you can let it bygones be bygones and work and begin working out a new plan. But you, you choose how you want to react to that. But because you have made that choice, you're exercising that level of self-discipline, which you really, really need. And that's going to how, allow you to strengthen that mindset. You know, the mind is a muscle. The mind is a muscle and it has to be exercised. And we talked about this and I uh, think we did another video already um, on some other th things, but uh, the mind is a muscle and it has to be exercised. And this is a way that you can develop your your mindset, having a strong mindset, but making sure before you react to something, you choose what the, that reaction is going to be. Point uh, number uh, six I want to tell you is modify what your expectations are. You know, sometimes if the goals are too high, I'm not going to say lower your goals, but break your goals down into thresholds. Before you reach 100, try to get to 10. Try to get to 30. Your ultimate goal is 100, but before you get there, don't shoot for the 100 right away. Modify. Try to, okay, let me just get 10 right now. Let me just get 10. Let me practice on 10. Okay, I'm getting 10 consistently. Now, let me go with 30. Let me go with 30. Okay, okay. And then work your way up to 100. Modify what your expectations are. When those expectations show up, uh, they're not going to be, you know, we're not saying lessen your, your expectations or lower your standards or anything, but just make sure that you're being reasonable and rational based off of the data and the information that you have. You know, you're trying to do some things you've never done before, so you don't have anything to measure them against. Now, if you had a mentor that you were bouncing some things off of, that mentor can help shorten some of those trial and error runs and shorten some of that learning curve and give you some heads up on some of the expectations as well. This is why it's so important uh, to have a mentor in this business. Um, but number seven is avoid negative thinking. Just because you get a no, just because somebody lets you down, just because that contract didn't go through, just because... Uh, the property you were checking out had a major, major situation that just kind of said the numbers are not going to work on this deal. Just because something didn't work out, uh, don't think of it negatively. Move on. Just keep, just, just have it in your arsenal of experience to say, okay, I, I've been there, done that one now. Let me move on. Uh, chuck it up to an experience and another learning milestone in your business. Um, you know, I've done 130 transactions and I'm still learning. You still run into things that, whoa, okay. And, and it's nice to have a mentor. It's also nice to have a network of folks that are seasoned like me that I've worked with to say, hey, man, look what I, I ran into this. What's your thoughts? What do you think? You know, it's, it's, it's good to do it that way. But, you know, you want to avoid staying trapped in the negative thinking. You want to avoid staying trapped in the negative thinking. If your marketing isn't working, well, do something different or do something longer or put more money into it or something. Uh, because at the end of the day, marketing is working for people. Marketing is working for others. Why can't you do it? Why is it not working for you? You just haven't found the right spot yet. But you, you have to continue to not tell yourself it don't work. You have to say, okay, this maybe didn't work and I did this for this long or whatever. Let me try this. Uh, let me talk to my mentor and see what suggestions he might have. Things of that nature. But you want to stay out of just staying in the negative thinking. So I know this video was a little longer 
but this was some really, really good information because I find a lot of folks that don't succeed in being, being in a real estate business is because of a weak mindset. They're not able to deal with the, the, the negatives, the undesirable items, the, uh, you know, the challenges that this business brings. And, you know, we here, the Real Estate Wholesale Helpline, this is a coaching and mentoring channel. We're not trying to flash a lot of pretty things about the real estate so we can sell you a book or anything like that. Although we do have some things available like that. Uh, we are, our purpose is to get into your mind and get you coached and mentored the correct way. And if you like what I'm offering, uh, please check out the Real Estate Wholesale Helpline link uh, in the description of this video. And feel free to get onto my calendar and book a session, a, a 30 minute free session, uh, con consult session with me where we can talk about your business, what you're trying to do. Uh, I can give you some golden nuggets there in private one on one. And we can talk about what uh, a longer term relationship with me would look like if you would like to see me as your mentor. And I, I frankly, I only take on a, a handful a month. Uh, I only take on a handful of students a month. I do have students across the country and I only take on a handful of students a month because I'm still active and mentoring takes a lot of time and a lot of energy and especially the way I run my program, you get me, not a salesperson, not a representative, you get me and uh, all me. So if you like this video, please like it. Uh, please make what comments uh, that you uh, have been provoked in uh, this topic. And um, let me know uh, if there's anything else you'd like me to address. And uh, subscribe to this channel and follow me. I'm on all the major uh, platforms, I believe, uh, from Instagram and YouTube and Facebook and Twitter. Uh, but follow me. And until then... I'll see you at the top because the bottom sure is crowded. God bless. Hey, hey, Sammy, do the do rude back at you. Hey, uh, are you smelling what I'm cooking? Are you picking up what I'm putting down? You like these golden nuggets that we are dropping at you? Well, if you do, please like the video that you just seen. Also, subscribe to this platform. You can do that by hitting the red uh, subscribe now button somewhere here or there. Uh, look for it. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, that would encourage me to continue to put out uh, more content like this and uh, check out my library of other videos as well. Also, don't forget, if you need to set your appointment, the link is in the description, Real Estate Wholesale Helpline. And until then, I will see you at the top because the bottom sure is crowded. God bless Sammy. Doom, doom, doom.